I have some exciting news for you. The latest extension for Luminar Neo has just been announced and you will soon have panorama stitching. In this video, you'll get an overview of the new Luminar Neo panorama stitching extension and what it can do, including some really cool things like HDR pano and creating a panorama from a video. It's actually pretty cool. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you're ready to get stitching those panos, let's go. Remember to stick around till the end because I'll have some bonus tips for you. The first thing you need to do to get this pano extension is to install the latest update for Luminar Neo when it's available. Just check for updates and install. Then, once you've done that, Click on the Extras button in the Catalog module up here in the right corner and you'll see the Panorama extension added to the list. Then just click the Install button. I've already done that. So you can see it now shows up right underneath Upscale on the side panel. If you don't see the side panel, remember to click this button here to hide it or show it. Next, let's look at how it works. The simplest function is a basic pano. You need to have some images that are taken of a scene in panoramic bracketing mode. I'm going to use these three here. You can see they are of a scene in Fez, Morocco that I took this way. And I'm going to just select the three images and drag them in here. You'll notice on the panorama stitching box that it does say drag two or more images or one video. I'll show you that in a moment. So dragging them in, like the HDR extension, there's a few settings here that you can use to do some corrections. And then just click start. If it's not an HDR bracketed set of images, which it also has the capability to handle, just click Skip HDR and it will start merging the images. Then you have a few settings and options here as to how you would like them to be merged. You can zoom in and out. Right now this view is a little bit clunky. This is the very first iteration and I'm running a beta. So I'm hoping that we have the ability to zoom in on this somewhere between 100% and what I'm seeing now. So you can choose the type of blend that you want for your pano and you can adjust like this. Once you're happy you click stitch and then you can crop it and save the final image. Another pet peeve or minor drawback of the stitching extension so far and I'm hoping that they're going to add this at a later date is that it does not currently have the ability to do content aware fill or fill in the edges where there's pieces of information missing. So you have to either crop in a little farther or you could try and use the erase tool. I actually did that earlier quite successfully. So I might leave this corner of the sky blank or black, crop it and then save it and then just use the erase tool to fill it in. It did a pretty good job earlier when I tried it. Your stitch panos are put into a new folder called Panorama Stitching similar to using any of the other extensions here in the panel. The second kind of panel you can make is a vertical one. So instead of having the images shot side by side, they're one on top of the other. For example, I have three images of this cathedral that I photographed in Peru and I want to stitch them. So I've selected them, drop them into the box and go through the same process. Once again, skipping the HDR, select the various modes. Once again, you can see the challenge with the edges. If I crop in to this one, I either have to lose the top of the cathedral or have blank areas in the sky. So I'm going to choose to have blank areas, crop it like so, and then use the erase tool. Aha! So something interesting happened. When I click save, it actually did the content aware fill on the edges. As you can see, the corners are nicely filled in. 
If I zoom in, you could see that it's done a decent job. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty good, especially up in these corners where it's kind of abstract in the clouds. So that's interesting. That's the first time I noticed that it did that, and I've been playing with this tool for a few days now. So basic panel stitching is pretty simple and straightforward using this extension. Here's another example. This is a series of images taken in the square in Lisbon. You can see there are several, eight photos total. I've already merged these, and there's the resulting pano. It's quite impressive. It works really well. You'll see the final image size is over 30,000 pixels wide. It's combined all of those images to make this large image, which will print into a beautiful pano that you could hang in your home. Next, you can also do HDR and panoramic merge at the same time. Here you can see that I have several bracketed images, and when you drop them into the extension, now in the options, there's also ghost reduction, which you may need for the HDR bracketed images. When you click start, now you have all the bracketed images visible here. You can see that it sorted them out nicely, and once you click continue, it'll merge them into one finished HDR pano. Here's another set of images I'm going to run through and do HDR pano. You can see there's three brackets of each image of the Grand Canyon. I'm going to stitch them, crop it, and let's see if it fills in the gaps for me this time, especially in the sky up here. I'd like a little bit more sky. Save it. And voila. See, this time it didn't fill in the sky. There's a blank spot. But you can continue editing your merge image from here. So just take it into the edit module and edit as you wish. But you can see that it's done a nice job of maintaining all the detail from the bracketed images in the HDR merge as well as stitching the panorama correctly. The next thing that Luminar Neo's Panorama Stitching extension can do is something that Lightroom cannot, and that is stitching a multi-row series of images into a large panoramic composite. Let's take a look at how it works. Here I have 25 images of a skyline scene shot in Lisbon, Portugal. You can see they're sort of scanning across the scene and down and around to capture various different details from left to right as well as top to bottom. So when I drop them all into the pano extension, as long as there is enough overlap between some of the images, it will attempt to merge them all together into one large composite. Make note that the more images that you drop into the extension, the longer it may take to process them. It really has to think about how they all fit together, so have a little patience. Once you've selected the type of panoramic, you can just stitch them. And then here is the final option for cropping. There is a way to tilt if it's crooked. So I'm going to just grab the corner and straighten it based on the horizon. And now I've lost a little bit from this side. So correct my cropping a little bit here. And you'll notice there's a piece missing. So if you're going to do this kind of pano, make sure that you take enough shots so that it's not missing any information. I'm going to go with something like that and see if I can fill in that final corner. And here's the final merge of the 25 images. You could see the piece missing in the bottom left corner. But overall, it looks pretty good. I did another one similar with the same scene shot a little bit later in blue hour. And as you can see, there's a few problems with this one and the inconsistency of the sky. Make sure to stick around till the end of the video because I'll have some bonus tips for you on how to avoid problems like this when you're photographing your panos. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting and exciting. Making a panorama image from a video. In order to do that, you need to have a video that pans across the scene, ideally from left to right something like this. So once again, I'm going to just drop this into the panorama stitching extension and click start. 
Now you see a slightly different window. This allows you to choose the start point and the end point of the video. So if you've got some points in the video at the beginning or the end where it goes on and on, you can just crop it off or you can choose to only have part of the scene. So I think I'm going to go from there to about there. And I'd like to end, just make note of the time, at about 14.52. So I'm just going to come in to that point right there. So this tree becomes the edge on the right of the image. I'm gonna turn this one off for now. We'll come back to that one in a moment. That's another cool feature. So we click continue. And there I am at the crop window, finalize the crop and save the image. And we've got a pano from that video. That's pretty cool, right? But wait, there's more. Let me take this video that has a skier moving across the scene. Now, when I play the video, I'm going to turn this option on for custom object composition. You'll see why in a moment. When I play the video, you can see that the skier comes through the scene from right to left. Now, what I wanna do is capture him more than once. So I'm just going to start at the beginning when he appears here. And then all you have to do is draw a little box around the object you want to capture. That's it. Then you can continue to scroll through the timeline. Maybe I'll capture another one of him here. Another one just before he jumps. And you can adjust the size of the capture. One in midair. Maybe another one over here. And finally, just before he lands. So I've captured seven instances of the skier. Now I'm going to continue and see what happens when we get the final stitched image. You can sort of see what's happening here. I've got multiple versions of the skier. So I'm gonna crop in. I don't need the ski lift. And I wish there was a little bit more space on the bottom here, but I think it's gonna work. And there's the final image. I did do a little bit of the erase tool in the bottom right hand corner to fill that gap in, and it did a really nice job. I also used the develop tool and enhance AI to punch up the image overall. But here you can see clearly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight skiers. So we've captured him from the frames in the video and merged it into the pano. I've never seen anything like this. It's really unique and really cool. I'm not sure that it'll have a lot of application in my photography, but what if you're taking videos with your phone? Think about the application there and using it on pano videos with your phone. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Have you done panorama photography before? Have you been anxiously waiting for this extension like I have? What other features are you waiting for that they haven't introduced into Luminar Neo yet? Tell me in the comments below. So far, my thoughts on the Luminar Neo Pano stitching extension is that it can do a lot of things really well, and it's only the first iteration. I literally have the beta version, so it's only going to get better and go upwards from here. I'm excited to see where it goes. If you need to purchase Luminar Neo or upgrade, use my discount code DPM10 to get 10% off when you check out. Okay, thanks for sticking around. Now for the bonus tips that I promised earlier. When you're photographing your panoramas, keep all of these things in mind. You'll have more success with the final merge images if you handle these things well. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your exposures from one image to the next are consistent. Remember the problem with the blue hour merge? Some of the images were lighter or darker than others, and when you merge them together, it looks inconsistent. Second, make sure the white balance is the same as well. You don't want any weird color shifts from one part of the image to the next. Make sure that you take enough images and overlap them sufficiently. You wanna have about 25 to 30% of the image overlapping with another one. 
that will help the program to determine the same features in both images and where to stitch them together. Also, remember the missing information at the corner of the one composite? That's because there was an image missing from that area. So err on the side of taking too many. You can always just leave some out if you've got extras. Bonus tip number four, take your images vertically, even if you're stitching them horizontally. This way you're maximizing the height of your panorama by utilizing the total pixel size of your camera. Then when you merge it together, you'll have a nice large file suitable for printing, especially if you'd like to hang it on the wall. And finally, if you're doing a panoramic handheld or if you're doing a video, make sure that you keep it steady and try and keep the horizon as level as possible. If you have too much of this happening, you'll end up with cut off bottoms and tops and missing pieces of information. If you've enjoyed this video and you like my teaching style, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course now. There's a link for you in the description area below. If you want more learning here on YouTube, check out one of the videos on the screen. Until next time, take care and happy panorama stitching.